Hi, in this tutorial, I will be talking about design system libraries in UXPIN, which are a place to store colors, textiles, assets, and UI elements. You can share and use them across different projects and teams. They also help you maintain consistency and can be a great foundation of your entire design system. On the left panel in the UXPIN editor, you will find an icon of the design system library. I will create one now. I'm setting the name of the library, then I have to decide who will have access to it. Those with access can design using elements from the library. You can give access to the owner, the whole team, or selected users. Then there's a permission to edit the library, such as adding new elements, editing them, or deleting existing ones. Cool, I created the library and can add some elements to it. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can add symbols, assets, textiles, and colors. First, I want to add a color. You can add your first color by typing in its hex code. I'll type in three zeros, which gives me black. Now just hit enter, and there we go. The first color was added to my library. Okay, I'll add another one gray in the exact same way. But that's not the only way of adding colors. You can add them from an already existing element. I'll use this design to show you how. See, this button right here has two colors. The first one orange, which is the color of the fill, and the color of the text, which is white. I'll just select it, click the Add from Selected button, and this adds orange and white to the library. I'll also add the color from the, from the background of this section above and give it my own name, dark blue. Okay, let's move on to text styles. I want to store the style of this headline element that I've just selected. I can add it with the add textile button and then I'll get a preview of what it looks like. This is where I can look up the information about its font family, font size, and spacing. I'll change the name of the style to match it with a convention of my design. How to use it after it's added to the library? Just drag and drop it on the canvas. Then we have assets. You can upload different assets such as icons or images. I'm going to upload some icons which I've prepared before. I will use them later. Once uploaded, they show up in the library and I can drag and drop them on the canvas. And last but not least, symbols. You can add already existing symbols or any other elements. They will also turn into reusable symbols. Reusable because you can use them across the same prototype or another project. You can store simple elements like buttons, inputs, or text elements, as well as complex components with interactions. And let me show you how it's done. I want to add this button, so let me select it. Then I have to click Add Symbol. As I said, you can also add advanced components, such as this goals component with images inside. Then I'll add this chart, which is built from different elements and also uses other symbols. I can also change the names of my symbols. The important thing to mention here is that symbols are used in the design system library because they give you the power of changing the element globally in the entire project or only on one selected instance thanks to overrides. If you want to know more about symbols, check out our tutorial about them. But storing elements isn't the only possibility offered by design system libraries. They also help you maintain consistency by syncing elements with the library to always have the latest version of your elements handy. Like in this example. See, this yellow notification with a number shows that at least one element from the library used on my design can be outdated. It usually happens when you update a symbol in another project or simply if someone else updated it. After you click on it, you'll see a panel to update the symbol on the design to its latest version in the design system library. The great thing about these updates is that they don't erase any symbol overrides. So in case you use them on your design, you won't have to change the content again. So now you know how to sync the design from the library. But what about the other way around? how to update the design in the library if you have a modified version on your project. That's also pretty simple. When modifying the design, you can also add some overrides. 
I'm going to change the color of the button again to dark blue, which I've already added to my design system library before. You could do it in the second tab from left in the color fill panel. Now select the button. In the symbol section of the properties panel, it says that the element may be out of sync. You can again sync from library to bring back its design from the design system library, or you can use sync to library and that will update the symbol in the design system library. But remember, if you have elements with overrides, you first need to set them as default or clear them to have a possibility to sync the design to the library. You can categorize elements in every tab with your own preferences. You can do it right here in this panel. It's also possible to have more than just one library. You can add another one down here. This is also the place to manage them and switch between them depending on which one you currently want to use for your design. To the left, there is a pencil icon that opens the edit mode of your current library. You can remove elements or remove them between categories. And last but not least, there are settings. You can set the library name and permissions from here or simply start creating a new design system based on your current design system library. To sum up what we've just gone over, design system libraries are a great place to store colors, textiles, assets, and UI patterns. You can use and share your libraries to prototype and design with awesome consistency. Keep them up to date by syncing elements from or to the library. You can customize your libraries by creating categories and giving access and edit permissions to them. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.